I want to first welcome everyone to Edolution 2011. Um, I want to thank, first and foremost, our customers who have traveled, um, in some cases, very long distance to come here and share t t yesterday and today with us. Um, I mean, just thank you so much. Uh, I'd like maybe Social Solutions staff a little round of applause for our customers that came out here. I know it is no small effort coming from Seattle, Alberta, San Antonio, some of the distances you guys have come, so I want to thank you for that. Um, I also want to thank the members of the PAB, the Product Advisory Board, for their role in helping with the conference and the software over time. That would include Jill Nielsen, uh, Joe Guffey, Forrest, Odile, Juan, Isaac Castilla, and uh, Jay Strickland. Thank you, Pab, very much. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank our t t two more groups that I want to thank before I get started here. One is, uh, one is the group of presenters we had yesterday. Um, David, Hunter, Ken Berger, Kate Tanzi, Kate Robinson, Robert Edgar, and Isaac. Thank you so much for your great talks yesterday. Thank you. And uh, I'd be remiss, oh, I'm one slide ahead. I would be remiss if um, I didn't say anything about uh, the social solution staff that put this conference on. And I want to really particularly call out uh, Jeff Mason, Kyla, and um, Jamie Okanak. Thank you very much, guys. There's probably other people I should thank, but. I have uh, three things that I want to talk to you all about today during lunch. And um, three, three things that, uh, that are on my mind. I want to tell you a little bit about the company, Social Solutions, that I uh, return to in May of this year um, to be the, the CEO of. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the software and uh, ETO software, some of the vision we have for it, where it's heading. And I want to, have, and I have, I want to talk a bit about the Superstar Foundation, which is a foundation I started uh, three and a half years ago with uh, some of my good friends and colleagues in this room. And uh, well, what I really want to do is I want to t tell you these three things in the, in the, um, in the context of, of big mistakes that I've made, um, honestly. Um, I really feel as though uh, we learn from our mistakes first and foremost. Uh, Isaac said this very well yesterday. We said we are all human. We make lots of mistakes. We need to learn from them. We need to adjust our approach, et cetera. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about the company, the software, and, and even the foundation in the context of some mistakes. Um, because I really believe one thing, and that is that uh, it is having a bit of humility as we go about this work, uh, not necessarily thinking we've got it all nailed down in a model, but that it constantly needs to evolve over time. We need to constantly be looking at new ways to get better. Um, is an extremely important part of the social services uh, work that, that's done by the people in this room. Um, I also want to make one comment about, uh, it's great to have a baby here. I want to make one comment about uh, my favorite part of yesterday. I enjoyed almost every one of the talks. I enjoyed them all. And um, I'll tell you, the, uh, the movie, in Kate's movie, um, seeing the nurse family partnership, this is from my perspective, one, one big takeaway yesterday, seeing the nurse family partnership was, was a model that I thought was you know, absolutely nailed down from top to bottom. These guys know exactly what they're doing. They get, fit, the federal government is dumping money into the states in order to replicate their model. Um, hearing David Olds in that, in that little clip say, you know, we actually aren't doing that well on domestic violence. Um, in preventing domestic violence, and we actually need to get a little bit better at that, was just another eye-opener for me that the work continues to evolve over time. And that's just incredibly important. All of my favorite customers, as you can see here, um, what they lead with is we're not exactly sure this is what works, but, but we think we're onto something. Let us, let us try to prove that to you. 
going to talk about the company. Sorry. So, uh, Social Solutions um, is a for-profit company. I don't know how many people know that. Um, I can tell you that when we had our first uh, when we had our first investment in 2006, we had a uh, we had a marketing firm that came in and they did a big survey of all of our customer base, uh, you know, trying to figure out okay why are people buying this software? Why are people in engaged in this company? And uh, it turns out that a, a, quite a number of our um, customers thought we were a nonprofit. Um, or that we came, from, um, we all came from the nonprofit sector, but that, that it wasn't, you know, we felt like them. And um, the truth about social solutions is that we are a for profit company, and frankly, we have investors that have put money into our company uh, that are seeking a return. Um, it's, 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 it's a good thing, and sometimes it's a challenging thing. Uh, one of the things our company needs to do uh, for our investors is to generate uh, a return on investment for them. Um, I said at our very first conference in front of everyone that things like this conference and the ability to spread the message about performance management and how hard and how important it is to track pro progress and to meet indicators over time and to understand that um, doesn't happen unless a company can get its feet underneath of it, sometimes through investment in order to make these things happen. But we also have a social mission here at Social Solutions. Um, if you don't know, our mission is to challenge and equip service providers and their funders to turn their good intents into measurable outcomes. Um, that is what our company is about. That's our mission. We take that very, very seriously. Um, and so there is a bit of tension that happens um, in between the need for a financial return and the need to promote our, our social mission. Some of the tension points, we, we need to grow our revenue. We need to grow our customer base. Those things I think you guys can understand. But we need to also fulfill our social mission. And that means we need to do things at the leadership level at Social Solutions like put money, investment money ourselves into things like the Outcomes and Effective Practices Portal, um, put money into things like the Alliance for Social Investing, and to actually put money into a film like Saving Philanthropy and seed that kind of effort. And uh, if you think that it's easy to uh, explain to a board <laughs> um, what kind of hard return you're going to get on those investments, it's not. It really isn't. So there's this tension between trying to fulfill what we have to do in order to grow our mission and to, and to succeed in our mission and, uh, and to actually um, and to, and to make money for our investors. So I'm coming up on my first big mistake here. I think we've walked the line fairly well um, as a company. Uh, you know, if I were grading us, I don't know, C plus, maybe a B minus, something along those lines. Um, we've grown our company quite a bit, as you can see here in the graphics. Ten staff, 2005. Um, that's when I was last in charge of the company. Uh, we've got about 95 staff now. You can see our revenue figures have gone up, the number of users have gone up, the number of organizations using the software. And we've also seen big results from our social investments, right? So today, um, they're, they're, we're announcing the launch of the Outcomes and Effective Practices Portal. Those of you who were around a couple years ago, two or three years ago, may remember the effort we called the ETO Library, okay? The idea was we have lots of customers, and a lot of times they come to us, and they do not have tools, assessments, things that they, that they need in order to measure the indicators and outcomes that they, they have. So, to fill that gap, we, we initially started calling on research and evaluation firms and asking, okay, can we use this? Can we use it? Let's put it into the library. You know, Social Solutions took this effort on. But, uh, but frankly, that work has been done at a much larger scale and, and, and much better by organizations like the Urban Institute and Child Trends 
and, um, and we've partnered with them now. And for every organization in this room that's a customer, you've got to understand the driving force behind this OEPP is that as a customer of social solutions, you ought to be able to go onto a website when you're getting ready to run a new program or when you're actually saying, what are we trying to do with this program? You ought to be able to go and find research, best practices, and tools and click a button and download them into your software. And that's what we're driving towards with the OEPP. So again, a nice investment. I think we can do even better. <clears throat> this is the first mistake I'd point out in terms of running social solutions and some of the things that we could do better as a company. Um, I believe we need to be more transparent with you all. Um, we need to have more communication. We need to explain our intent to our customer base better than we have in the past. The example that I'm going to use here is in the launch of ETO results which launched uh, midway through last year. And I think it's an excellent product. How many people in the room use ETO results now? Good handful of people use that. It's a great product. It certainly has taken our entire reporting platform to another level. But what we failed to do is really explain that, I, I believe, explained well, hey, this is the investment Social Solutions put into its product four to five man years of effort um, well over half a million dollars to improve the reporting tool of, of our software. And, and, and I think that with a little bit of explanation and a little bit more communication around the intent there and why we were doing that, uh, ETO results, which has been well received, would have been better received. That I think people would have understood the, the product a little bit better and the intent behind it. So in terms of the company, I'm convinced that the keys to achieving our mission are pretty simple. We need happy, enthusiastic customers that use our software well and as intended. I'm going to talk more about the software a little bit later. Um, we need example organizations. When an organization takes its theory of change or takes its logic model and builds it right down to the five-foot level where the rubber meets the road, where the staff is working with individuals, you can see that organization become a lightning rod for other groups in their area. People want to go visit them. What is going on there? They are energized by data, and we need more of that. Social Solutions also needs to improve the core areas of our software. Um, we need to take on the challenge of making understanding efforts to outcomes, relating efforts to outcomes easier and simpler and more intuitive for the people using our software. And that's a, a commitment that Social Solutions needs to live up to. Um, I think one of the things I want to point out that we're going to begin to do more than ever is expand the use of the ETO marketplace. So the marketplace, another example of just making sure we're clear with communication, you can think about an ETO marketplace, kind of a, a, a place of a bunch of add-ons of things you can buy as an organization, um, you know, and, and add on to your ETO software. You can say, oh, well, you know, Social Solutions is looking to maybe make a little extra money, maybe add it to the revenue line, et cetera. I'd like to explain to you that what we're doing with marketplace is very intentional. We need Social Solutions, our development team, the 14 or 15 ladies and gentlemen that work on the software you use every day, need to make the software better, the core of the software better. It needs to work faster. It needs to it be more stable. It needs to have less bugs when we do releases. The only way for us to achieve that is to begin to fence off what ETO software is, the core of the product and begin to address it accordingly, right? This is what we need to evolve. This is where we need to take this. So you invite products, partners, and partner products into the mix to serve other needs that frankly would have our development team chasing down one end, chasing down another, as we try to be all things to all people. That's where we're heading. I believe that's the keys to achieving our, our dual mission. All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the software. I don't want to be too redundant here, but 
ETO is designed to help you navigate to success. Um, you've got to have a plan. You've got to understand the impact of what you're doing. ETO software is about performance management, without a doubt. I'm going to take you through a little history of ETO. So uh, in 2002, we released ETO software. And uh, this little gray report here that you see was the, I'm sorry. Right when I got to the software, too. The, um, the gray box is, uh, is the early sort of renditions of ETO. This is that understanding of what, as a program, are we putting in, and what needles are we moving in our population we're serving. And uh, over time, um, we've tried to evolve the concept a bit. Um, the, in fact, even the old reports, this, uh, this one from 2003, is getting a new coat of paint and uh, is going to be released in a webby version, which we're very excited about. Um, in 2005, the ETO box score, my, my personal favorite uh, of, the, of the mix here, um, I actually thought, there's a quote about somebody who said, uh, I don't know why we need patents anymore. Everything's already been invented. This was back in the 1900s or something along those lines. Well, ETO box score was my, um, my sort of, this is it. It's all done now. <laughs> Nothing else needs to be done. You can now drive performance right down to the staff level and understand which staff are most responsible for the results of your organization. Um, but we kept evolving. The ETO assessment was an early attempt to look at correlations uh, between activities, whether at the point of service, and assessments, and, and things that you capture periodically. And this report, this ETO assessment report, is the kind of report that uh, I believe Isaac, Cas Isaac Castillo used to understand that the domestic violence program he was running was actually causing more harm than good and for them to be able to make their adjustments to their approach. Here comes the mistake. In 2009, we released the ETO Analyzer. This was our attempt to help organizations um, do correlations across a number of data elements in the software, whether it's effort qualifiers, whether it's point of service, it's, uh, it was intended to be visual. It was intended to be sort of the end-all, be-all of ETO. And um, we released it as a company with a little fanfare at the conference we had that year, but with no support, uh, no documentation, no training, and unsurprisingly, it's not been used. Um, I believe, let me get a show of hands, who's used the ETO analyzer in their programs? We got two, three, maybe three. Oh, right, my staff. <laughs> <laughs> so again, uh, a mistake and something we're gonna learn from. And uh, what I'm here to announce today is in a couple weeks, we are going to be repackaging, um, providing training on providing documentation of and, uh, and repackaging the ETO analyzer along with um, something called a correlation report. And it's going to be in the software and it's going to be free to our customers because it's our commitment to making this thing better over time. So I want to tell you a little bit about what this does. It's really cool. The ET, ET, and we're packaging under this, uh, both of these, the, the analyzer and the correlation report underneath the, uh, the heading of ETO analytics, okay, ETO analytics. And uh, what this does is this is going to allow you to choose something you want to think about, like something you're trying to drive at, whether it's a uh, transformational relationship or whether it's a student's grade that you're trying to move. Something that you track either through a point of service or an assessment element. And what we do in the software is we take the group of participants, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the group of participants who have been worked with on that particular outcome. 
and we churn through your entire data set. We look at, we run it against demographics, we run it against every point of service element that's happened with them, we run it against effort qualifiers, we run it against all of their assessment elements. And what we're looking for is correlations. Now, I am not a statistician. I know that this is based on the Pearson's coefficient, and you better not ask me what that is. It's also a single Y tail something or other. <laughs> exactly. But I will tell you this, it's pretty cool. Because here's what it does. And I've, and I've, and I've taken a look at this with a couple uh, of, of my favorite customers data sets. And what you do is you, is you say, here's what I want to look for. I want to look at this particular outcome. And it's going to pop back the things in two, two categories, things that are statistically significant, things that are not statistically significant, frankly, that you I believe you still can learn from. And what, what, what pops back is, is how correlated certain things are. You can further tease it out. If you look at the, uh, to the left, there's, there's red, red and yellow, green arrows. You can tease it out and say, all right, now that I have an overall understanding of correlation, I actually want to take a look at what is correlated with the group that has moved in terms of grades or engagement of our program or um, uh, you know, any outcome that you're looking to, to, to track. I can tell you that playing around with this, some amazing things started popping. In one customer's data set, I was taking a look at a, a number of youth who improved, some 264 youth improved, and this, the thing that most correlated with their improvement was the um, grade le the I'm sorry, their highest grade achieved in zero to eight education. In another customer's data set, taking a look at, again, over a period of time, the outcome was uh, educational attachment. There was a single assessment element, asked at intake. So it had nothing to do with what they, they, they were actually tracking at the point of service. A single assessment element, tracked at intake, did they smoke marijuana or not? Think about the program implications here as you guys hone in on your target populations and who you're actually moving the needle for and understanding um, what's working and what's not in your programs and services. Um, I, I believe, I've, I've talked with Isaac about this a little bit, um, that this effort in terms of even if it helps frame the data that you're going to use for an evaluation and re or research person, it's got to be a savings of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to organizations to find these kinds of correlations. Um, I'm very excited about the launch of this um, coming in two or three weeks with our, with our next release. And I want to I wanna, I, I wanna thank my brother, Dave Butts, sitting right back there, who drove it home, who drove the whole thing home. Dave, stand up. I know we're not going to make the same mistake that we did with the analyzer, with ETO Analytics. Um, all right. I want to say a couple things. I'm going to keep this short. Um, the software, ETO software, for those of you that didn't know, uh, I was a direct service worker. I worked actually uh, across the river. This is, Vince, Vince talked a little bit last night about coming full circle. Um, Vince, Vince and I, worked across the river at an organization called Living Classrooms Foundation um, and uh, did social work. And, and uh, ETO software came out of my work with youth and the frustration of foundations, funders, frankly, researchers and evaluators coming in and saying, hey, here are the outcomes for your program. We need to know. Kids that got a job, we need to know um, kids that got their GED, that's what you're shooting for. And I was working with 14 and 15 year old adjudicated youth who didn't want to be there. And I was working very hard on getting them to make eye contact with me, getting them to engage me at any level whatsoever. And the 
concept of the software came out of this idea that, yeah, I know it's important to track these, these things that are outcomes, this employment or this, uh, this GED attainment, but if I am not able to track my efforts with this youth building a toolbox and the struggles we go through and the trials and tribulations and the ultimate um, engagement or not that I get from this youth, I'm never going to see these longer term things. One of the secrets for me for, for good use of our software is that organizations put what matters most to them on their point of service screen. And there's, there's two reasons for that. Number one is, of course, you get to manage and measure it, right? And program managers get to share information with staff. This is stuff that you probably have heard about today. It's stuff that happens at all of our best uh, high-performing organizations. But the other trick to ETO is that if you put the right things in front of people on that point of service screen, you ought to be driving intentionality in their work. David Hunter said something very insightful yesterday. Imagine that. He said, um, he was talking about case managers. I'm not, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna nail this, but he said, I don't wanna hear from case managers how the, the world, the different things that happened to a youth, how, how it impacted them, or you know, why they went off track. As a direct service worker, you are an agent of change. You are needing to be engaged in those conversations. You are needing to be intentional in the work. You are needing to drive that, that, that dialogue and, and that direction with the youth. And I think in, in the highest and best use of our software, that's what happens. All right. This is my, my final mistake. So, and I, I know for a fact that no one in this room has heard this story. I'm happy about that. How many organizations in the room would love to be on the front page of the USA Today? Your organization, come on. Little press, front page. Front page, right? So, uh, so I was on the front page of the USA Today. This is, uh, this is the story, June 3rd, 1998. It says, uh, sailboat is a lifeline for kids in trouble, okay? So uh, this is a story about some of the guys I was serving when I was down the street working as a direct service worker. and. Um, you know, you see these kind of stories all the time on the news or whatever, and you can read this one if you want. It's all about this great program, this great program, and how it's changing the lives of these young men that are involved. And, um, and this particular story is a, <laughs> this particular story is about a guy named James Spriggs. I'm going to say his name. Um, it's public record, right? His name's James Spriggs. He was in our program. We worked very, very hard with him. Uh, he was a tough, very tough student. Um, you know, quite honestly, in the program, he checked the boxes. He graduated from the program. He got his GED. And we got him a job. All's good. You know where this is heading, right? So about two years ago, I got forwarded an email from one of my colleagues. Um, hey, James just got sentenced to life in prison, right? He killed, he killed somebody, shot him in the back of the head down in some alley in Baltimore, drug dealing, you know, et cetera. You know, the thing is, okay, if you had asked us at that program, whether we got to James. See, this is my language. Uh, Anisha says relapse and stages of change, and I, and I like that. It's a little bit more formal. Mine was, man, we're not getting to this guy. You can feel that and you know it, okay? When you're doing this work, you can feel it and you know it. And, uh, and when I left 
the um, direct service work and the work that I really cared about working with those guys, I started this, or I, I didn't start. I needed to make some money first. I, uh, I actually, uh, I made a commitment to myself. I said, you know, if things go well with social solutions, I'm gonna figure out a way to try to drive the field of social work a little bit more towards this concept of engagement and this concept of transformational relationships. And, uh, and that is what the Superstar Foundation is uh, designed to do. I wanna break the tension a little by introducing the board of the Social Solutions Foundation, if you don't mind standing up for a minute, because these people have helped me so much in this foundation. So Isaac, Anisha, Dominique, Steve Montgomery, Jeff Mason, Adrian Bourdon, Matt Schubert. I just want to thank you guys for your efforts. I need to, I need to thank David Hunter for the early shaping of, of the foundation as well, and also uh, Adam Douglas, who's done a great job in terms of helping us get everything online. The Superstar Foundation is intended to, um, the, the mission of it is to highlight and expand the use of transformational relationships as the core of direct service work. Um, I happen to think that no matter what kind of social programming you're involved in, it's the relationship between the staff and the participant that is the biggest bellwether of success of whether or not you're going to see outcomes or not. I would say that in front of anyone, and I will defend it to the death. That includes groups like Nurse Family Partnership. I would love to see whether or not um, if they swapped out nurses, right, three or four times during the two, 24 months that they work with participants, whether they get the same results or not. I suspect they wouldn't. It's the most important part of social work for me, and the Superstar Foundation is intended to highlight that. So I'm going to do a little announcement here. We had our 2010 winners, and I want to give you an example of uh, one of our superstars. This is uh, Amber Grossenbacher. She's one of the four people that won the award. By the way, what we do with the Superstar Foundation, sorry for not explaining this well enough, is we are all about transformational relationships. What we do is we have an application process. It's online. Um, all of the organizations in this room, I hope that you, that you apply, that you, um, you know, put your, your, your best social workers forward, and we write them, the, or, the, the individuals, the case managers that are highlighted, that are accepted into our Hall of Fame, we write them a $5,000 check directly to them, not to the organization, to the social worker themselves. And we do that because we want to highlight great work in the field. And uh, so I want to read really quickly um, Amber's award. Amber worked two and a half years as a SEEDS TLP case coordinator. Listen to the mix of numbers and stories in this, in this. She goes above and beyond to build lasting, trusting relationships with those she works with. She will seek out activities and opportunities to engage with the young adult. 100% of Amber's 2010 caseload through the first 10 months of 2010 demonstrated an improvement in life skills as measured on the Ansel Casey Life Skills Assessment. Her peers rate was 88%. Her rate of success on other program indicators like job placements during the program, 86%. And participants reaching individualized residency goals, 60%, have also been the highest in the program. Amber often thinks outside the box and will engage in and provide opportunities and activities for participants that aren't typical case management services, teaching young women self-defense and taking a young woman shopping for a prom dress or to pick out her senior pictures. Amber truly inspires others to think creatively. She has served over 80 participants during her time as a case counselor. Um, she's not here. But I just want to give a little round of applause for that effort. So in closing, 
I hope that all of you um, go online. Please apply to the Superstar, to, to our Veronica Awards this year. Um, I want to thank all of you for taking some time listening to me, and uh, thank you for, for, the, for the work you're doing here at the conference. And really, most importantly, thank you all for being um, customers that really care. I know that the, the news yesterday was a little bit sobering. Most nonprofit organizations do not produce any thing of social value. <laughs> but I gotta be honest with you, when I look at this crowd and I see what's happening and I see the examples that I've seen in the, in the presentations I've seen today, it's very clear that there's hard work going on and that you all are committed to moving forward. And I just hope you feel like you have a company and a, and a leadership team and a staff in social solutions to support you there. Thanks.